I almost want to peep at this Watch What Happens live, but it's always boring. I really should be doing that job. He ain't that good at it no more. Oh, Lord, I might have to watch this because they got Twink Brooks as the bartender and he's in a 90s blouse. <laughs> it's a tight blouse with a high collar. It's got one of them swirl patterns on it, giving you like a groove is in the heart tee with a brown jacket over it. And then he's got the um, the messy hair. He's trying to give us a little bit of curl, a little bit of product. And you know that forehead going to break out. Candace gets to talk about how her mama embarrassed her and her husband by saying he was a broke freeloader. And she said, I got to call Candy to see what I need to say to my mama, Joyce. Now, see, Candace, you're in a different situation because everybody living off Candy's money over there. But they all living off your mama over here. So when she does pay the mortgage, she can run her mouth. <laughs> so somebody wrote in and said, well, look, Brooks is an adult who consented to be on this show. So if he gonna be like, I saw her puss, then don't get mad when she likes the fact that you are Twink Marks. Lisa says, well, one minute you tell him to stay out of grown folks business, but then you wanna say he's grown, so which is it? It's both. You can mind your business and be a grown folk. I wouldn't have said I saw her pussy. I wouldn't have said it. I would have kept that under my tube. <laughs> Oh, goodness, Meredith said, well, this all came about because Jen repeatedly showed her vagina in my home when two assistants asked her to cover up. <laughs> now we get to Candace and the body shaming and she wants to backpedal and pussy pop. If I offended Ashley, Andy gonna say, oh, you doing it if I offended? Oh, okay. We familiar with that if. Candace said, now hold on. If we gonna get on me for body shaming, then everybody needs to get the same heat for talking about saggy titties and stovepipe legs. But I'm the only one who's a body shamer. And Gabrissi does have stovepipe legs. So they asking Candace, what do you regret from the past few seasons? Do you regret calling Giselle's house a $900,000 cabin? And she said, well, it's going to be a beautiful home one day. But she started with me, so that's why I said it. But it ain't beautiful today. I mean, it is a $900,000 cabin, but um, it'll be nice one day when she can get her budget together. So Andy asked Meredith, what do you think about everyone saying you called the feds on Jen Shaw? Now, I'm real confused. They said Meredith was going to answer the question when they came back from the break. We came back from the break and she ain't never said nothing. Oh, OK, we get back to it now. Andy was like, oop, it slipped my mind. See, you getting on your Wendy Williams. Meredith said, well, Andy, haven't you heard everybody say not to come after my family? So she said, oh, okay, you want to run with this rumor? Hey, let's say I call the feds, then maybe y'all will leave me alone. That one actually wasn't that bad. All right, well, I'm going to see you soon. For love and marriage, Huntsville. Or maybe I'll do 911. I might do 911. That's a feel-good show. I need to feel good. So we open, and it looks like there's been some type of explosion on the street. We got... Papers and files everywhere. Smoke still in the air. Oh, and there are emus in the street, too. You got to watch out for emus. They vicious. Child of giraffe walking through the street, too. I, I don't know what happened last season. So we got a whole zoo outside, but we going to take it back to a week earlier. Because I was like, when did all this happen? So we see Chimney and Jennifer Love Hewitt dealing with their new baby, and it looks like she's got a touch of the postpartum. Meanwhile, at the firehouse, the hot Latin one getting ready to go to a christening with his new heifer. But now everybody's phone goes weird. They start getting tsunami warnings, earthquake warnings, and then people's phones randomly start dialing 911. So we got some heifer in her car and her GPS sends her into the river since everything's going haywire. Girl, the 911 operator who's Angela's daughter is walking her through how to open the car door once the car sinks enough so she can escape. She's like, fire and rescue is plan B. We gonna get you out this joker. She keeping her cool, cause I'd be freaking out. So she trying to get out, but then she sees some headlights, but fortunately it's the popo and they save her. Oh, another car went into the river and hit hers, but the car wasn't in water that deep, so she was gonna be all right. At Buck's apartment, he's in bed with his new red-headed heifer, and she's trying to find out what happened that made the GPS and the 911 go so wonky. 
But now we at Angela's house and they all sitting around and Hen's girlfriend says this was a ransomware attack. So as she starts telling them how fragile our infrastructure system is, the kids come in and say our game stopped working. However, the next day at court, Angela got to testify against that serial assaulter that beat her a few seasons ago. So this fool got a fan club, apparently, and he didn't just fired his lawyer and is going to represent himself. So Athena gonna have to testify to try to keep the evidence that they got in the trial. But now we going over to the hot Latino and his heifer and they picking out new suits for the christening. Oh Lord, the hot Latino passing out. So we at the hospital with him, and he had a panic attack, not a heart attack. So he's like, I ain't have a panic attack. I don't panic. The doctor's like, I don't know. You seem a little depressed to me. You did get shot four months ago. But at Athena's house, she hears somebody lurking about outside, so she grabs her gun. Aw, shoot. She see a door open and close it. Who's in the heezy? Oh, my God. It's the guy that beat her up before he in the house and now they fighting. Is this a dream? Cause he in jail, jail. Yeah, it was a dream. So she get up and her family making her a special breakfast cause they know it's gonna be a hard day. And now we cut to her in court. Okay, so he trying to say she planted the evidence and didn't have a warrant. He a good little lawyer. But now we had an air traffic control office and everything's going normal. Uh-oh, but a plane just disappeared off the radar. Okay, and now everybody's screens go down. So the plane is on a collision course to hit the tower, and they have enough time to brace for impact while they're trying to flash them and be like, hey, you're going to hit us. Okay, so we thought the plane was about to hit the tower. She flashing this big red light. Fortunately, the plane was nowhere near them. <laughs> they thought they was about to go. But goodness, one of the air traffic controllers then fell out from a heart attack. That call was too close for him. So then somebody else there starts having a panic attack right as the computer systems come on and all we see is a message saying you lose like a Vegas slot machine. Oh goodness, now the head air traffic controller falling out. What they didn't put in the coffee? However, back in court, everybody's cell phone starts going off. So then... A bunch of bailiffs bring in prisoners because the computer schedule messed up and they thought it was time for them to go in. One guy gets real upset because he's like, I'm ready for my trial. So he starts going after the judge. It's complete pandelirium. But in the melee, the defendant then slipped out because he's wearing normal people clothing. Child, you see the defendant just slipping out because can't nobody get in the building because the machines is messed up. He said, you know what, um... I'm going to exit stage left. So Athena run off after him, but is it too late? But right as she sees him and runs after him, an electric car goes haywire, so she got to save people in its path. Child, now manholes is exploding. The city's going crazy. However, back with the popo, we looking for our serial assaulter, and then they realize he might be with one of them heifers from the fan club. We got a helicopter with a heart about to land on top of the hospital. And then we got Angela and another detective checking the houses to see if any of the heifers are harboring the harmer. Oh, and the one detective didn't come to the right heezy. This heifer's real calm and cool, and she got a romantic dinner out. He there. Oh, goodness, but now we in the middle of a blackout. So they ain't gonna know where to land. So the helicopter tries to land, but it misses, and it's half on and half off the building. So now we got Athena going to one of the other Hudsey's house to see if she's harboring. So we got both detectives going through the heifers heezies. They ain't found them yet. So he ain't with the heifers. He go to the lawyers that he fired to try to get even with her. So he was trying to kidnap the lawyer, but the other detective got there just in time. What the hell? So now the lawyer done slit the popo's throat? What? So she on his side? Oh, Lord. All right, well, that was the shit.